All right, what's up guys? Guess what? We're gonna be talking about shoulder pain, but not so much shoulder pain, but we're gonna go over um, popping and snapping shoulders. So a lot of people, you can see I'm in my, uh, I'm in the back room of my clinic here, where we got, uh, we got a gym, come on, we got a gym, we've got a fridge. I'm not gonna open the fridge because something might jump out at me, but the way it works is with the shoulder, so it's a pretty complicated joint. I'm gonna take this down because we're gonna use this in about a second. That's my classic um, camera stand. But with the shoulder, what happens is, it's, the joint needs to stay centralized. And the reason I bring that up is a lot of the problems with the shoulder, well, that's a lot of friggin' noise, huh? So the joint needs to stay centralized. And by that, I mean the head of the humerus needs to stay inside what's called the, the glenoid fossa. So the glenoid fossa has this ring around the outside. It's a, uh, it's a labrum, so it's like a giant rubber band. And that's what's gonna kind of hold that joint together. The shoulder's a really, really sloppy joint held together by four muscles, the rotator cuffs. The three that we're really concerned about are gonna be the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. And what they do is they wrap around the shoulder from the back side of that scapula all the way around the front. And what they do is they torque that shoulder out a little bit and they allow that shoulder, so instead of being in this position, it rolls you open this way, and what, here's the problem. Everybody's got these anterior forward, you know, funky shoulder positions, but when you try and raise your arm overhead, and if you don't think you need an overhead position, bullshit, yeah, you do. Because if you need to get something anywhere overhead, you need it, but not only that, if you need to do any kind of shoulder movement, you need to have overhead mobility, and that's important. And the only way you can do it is if those three muscles are working right, and the head of the humerus stays in the center of that socket. So when you lose that roll slide glide, you start ratcheting across that surface, that hyaline cartilage, and it gets chewed up, but that's not the big issue. The big issue is that supraspinatus tendon, and I know this firsthand because I tore mine doing a snatch because I got greedy. But what happens is the head of that supraspinatus tendon comes up through here, but the tendon runs down underneath a bony prominence here, and you start to fray and wear away on that thing like a rope. So it's super strong, but what ends up happening is it starts to grind down and wear out every time you reach overhead, and you don't know until how it goes, and then the issue is now you have no movement because the supraspinatus, just to give you an idea, does the first 15 degrees of lateral deviation of the arm. So if you do, it's called the abduction, right? So when we move the arm all the way overhead at the side, that first 15 degrees is gonna be the supraspinatus. After that, the delt gets recruited and it takes over and that's what does the rest of your movement. But in order to do this properly, Without, like if you hear that, there's no popping or snapping. When you guys are doing your military press or you're getting underneath a snatch, clean and jerk, it doesn't matter, Arnold presses, all the stuff we do in the gym, and you get this pop, pop, pop in the shoulder, that's your body giving you the finger and telling you something's wrong. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do three things. We're gonna create some space in the joint because what's happening is it's too tight and the joint capsule tightens up because there's a danger. You always have to question why. It's not a matter of, is the joint tight? Does there need to be anything loosened up? Is there a stretching routine I can do? Is there a strength routine I can do? The answer is yes to all of that because the joint is tight because it's protecting an injury. So your body's smart. It senses that there's a problem, so it starts to cinch up that joint capsule, and then it starts to roll those shoulders forward because this is the position we spend our day in. So give yourself an easy test. Stand this way, put your arm out front, shove your shoulder as far as you can forward. So now it's rolled forward. I'm basically protracting the scapula, firing that serratus, and try and bring your arm overhead. You get to about here, and then you smash into the acromion on the coracoid. You can't go any further. Pull your shoulders back into that posterior aspect of the socket. Going up overhead is no problem. So there's your test. If you can't do that, you flunk. So we're gonna create some space in the joint. Then I'm gonna show you a cool little drill to undo it. And then we're gonna unload the posterior aspect of the socket so you actually have some movement in the shoulder. This stuff's super easy and you need two pieces of equipment, a band and a ball, and that's it. So it sounds like something you're gonna do when you're playing with your dog, right? Band and a ball. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a little bit of space and it's pretty straightforward. So you just take your band. Ideally, you want a heavier band than, than something, like you don't want a quarter inch band for this. You're gonna take the band and you're gonna loop your arm into it and you're gonna put your shoulder into the, into the band. So all I am is I'm in the band like this. I'm gonna grab this side and I'm gonna load up the band. So if the rig comes flying off the wall, it's because my carpentry skills were questionable, but they're not. So let me move this just a little bit. I got mad freaking camera skills. Like I think George Lucas should call me and ask me for camera advice. So we load up the shoulder. So the band is in, the, like I'm basically putting my arm through the shoulder or my arm through the band and I'm gonna load up the shoulder. And then I'm gonna hold this this way, but I'm gonna rotate away and let that really, really load up the shoulder and kind of feel it distract into the joint and then come back. And this is so disgustingly easy. 
and you're just gonna roll, the shoulder stays here, so you're not pulling the arm all the way across, you're just taking the arm, rolling it up, bring it up a little bit, roll, up a little higher, roll, bring it down, roll, and that's it. So you're gonna do that for about two minutes of work, you know the routine, until you have some space in that joint. That's number one. Number two, it's really, really easy. You're gonna get up against a wall. You see that big ass elephant on my wall? That's pretty funny, huh? So you're gonna get up, get up against the wall. You're gonna take your hands. So I'm making basically the karate chop hands, right? We're gonna come back. The thumb side is the side that's against the wall. And we're just gonna pull all the way down. So I'm driving my elbows down towards my side while maintaining the contact of my forearm and the, the uh, finger, the index finger, the thumb are against the wall. And I'm gonna drive straight up overhead. And then I'm gonna come all the way back down while I'm gliding against the wall. This is the important part is this external rotation because I'm firing that supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and especially that teres minor to force that external rotation. I'm gonna do three sets of 10 and then I'm gonna call it a day. Last one is we wanna free up that posterior capsule. This is where it gets fun. My team just turned on the lights, which means, hey, time to get your ass to work. So we take the lacrosse ball. What we're gonna be doing is hitting the posterior aspect. Just show wearing a different color shirt, huh? We're gonna hit that posterior cap. This is super miserable. So we're right on the back of the joint capsule and then we're just gonna load it up. We're gonna come back and forth and just seesaw away on that. Oh, that's just misery. It's diabolical, actually. If you ever feel like you're gonna throw up a sandbag, this is about it right here. And you just gnaw away at that posterior capsule, which tells me that mine is really, really glitchy right now. And you just peel away on it till you feel it free up. And then give yourself a quick test. It's just easy. Throw the arms out front, come all the way up. If there's no pain or popping, you're good to go. That's a long-term fix. You don't have to worry about this. It's not a quick fix. Do this. A bunch of times, call it a day. I'm Trev, Smashworks, you know how it works. I'll check you guys out tomorrow, have a good day.